Perfect, ready when you are. Okay. I want to welcome everybody to today's planning commission. I would like to start off with the Pledge of Allegiance. And Janet, would you be so kind as to lead us in that? Yes, no problem. <laughs> Indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <laughs> Janice, will you do the roll call, please? Sure. Commissioner Gupta? Here. Commissioner Santa Cruz? Here. Commissioner Ramirez? Here. Commissioner Ketchum? Here. Chairman Hansen? Present. And staff is represented by Monowitz and Fox. Beginning of all, every planning commission, we have an opportunity for oral communication by those who, who are present. For items that are not on today's agenda, the commission can take no action to make us aware of things that are happening that, that you'd like the commission to be, be mindful of. Is, do we have anybody who wishes to speak to us during the oral communication period? Um, we don't have anybody, but I would like to um, turn it over to my colleague, Sukmani Pirwal, who will just go over the, uh, the public comment portion of the meeting and how that will work. Please. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Um, good morning, Chair. Um, for those attending the meeting on the Zoom video conference, we will be using the raise hand feature uh, per item. Uh, once we open the agenda item for comments, please click the raise hand feature to raise your hand and to speak on the agenda item. Those who are joining by phone, please press star nine to raise your hand. So since this is a public comment um, section, uh, you can speak on um, items that are not on the agenda. So at this time, I would like to ask members of the public to click uh, raise their hand so that I can be notified if you want to speak on public participation. Uh, Mr. Chair, at this time, I, nobody has raised their hand. Thank you. I'll give maybe five more seconds. Not a problem. Okay, I think we're good. No more, no more public comment. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Consideration of the minutes. We have two sets of minutes that have been amended and distributed. Is there any more updates, comments? Uh, if not, could I have a motion for approval? I move. I move to approve uh, amended minutes and from I both second. meetings. And I second. Okay, we have a motion <clears throat> second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 It appears that it's passed unanimous. Okay, we'll move on to the next portion. We have one item on the agenda. For those who are attending a planning commission for the first time, our normal procedure is that the staff will do a presentation of which the commission will then ask questions of staff followed by, if so desired, a uh, presentation by the applicant, of which then it's an opportunity for the commission then to talk to the applicant. After that, it will be open to the public for comments, of which uh, today we're allowing five minutes per comment, of which then also the commission may ask further questions. At that point, we'll close the public comment and we'll come back to the commission for discussion and further questions and uh, hopefully coming to a uh, resolution today. So I will start off with uh, staff doing, well, Janet, can you please read in the, um, today's uh, item and then followed by staff with their presentation. Thank you. Item number one, owner, SCUR, LLC, Applicant, Anise Bishara, file number PLN 2018-00330, location, 
37 Frenchman's Creek Road, unincorporated Half Moon Bay. And then we have the project planner is Summer Burleson. Summer? Thank you, Summer Burleson, project planner. Uh, good morning, Chair Hansen and Planning Commission, uh, represented staff and members of the public. Uh, this item is for uh, a coastal development permit. Sorry. <laughs> Um, hopefully you can see this. Uh, so this item is for the um, Planning Commission's consideration of a coastal development permit and planned agricultural district permit to legalize two non-soil dependent greenhouses and supportive uh, infrastructure to facilitate agricultural use on the property. The property is a 164 acre uh, parcel located at 37 Frenchman's Creek Road in the rural unincorporated area of Half Moon Bay. The project site is zoned PADCD, which stands for Planned Agricultural District Coastal Development, and properties to the north, east, and south have the same PADCD zoning. The adjacent property to the west is located within the city of Half Moon Bay. Um, with a zoning designation of open space, which allows for uh, open space, recreation, and agricultural uses. Uh, the applicant is proposing to legalize two non-soil dependent greenhouses shown here, identified as greenhouse 9N and 9S. Both are over 11,000 square feet in size. These greenhouses were constructed by previous property owners without permits. Based on historical aerial imagery uh, research, uh, large hoop house structures were erected in the location where these two greenhouses are located sometime between 1993 and 2003. And then around 2007, 2008, it, uh, the hoop houses were uh, removed and these two greenhouses were constructed. Um, since the original hoop houses um, were erected to current time, it doesn't appear that the remaining area around it that's um, highlighted here in the red dashed box um, has been used for any sort of agricultural activity. Um, in addition, the project includes a new bioretention area, um, which is shown here with this red uh, line um, for on-site treatment to be located. It's uh, located in an area where there's an existing drainage swale that's adjacent to an interior paved roadway that's just south of Greenhouse uh, 9S and um, approximately 80 cubic yards of grading is necessary to construct that bioretention area. Uh, Frenchman's Creek Road um, commences at its intersection uh, with Highway 1 um, and it extends approximately 3,500 feet within the city of Half Moon Bay um, until it reaches the, the city county border. The applicant is pursuing separate permits with the city of Half Moon Bay for roadway work improvements um, that fall within the city's jurisdiction. The project before you today is limited to roadway improvements within the county's jurisdiction. Um, so extending from the county um, boundary line to the property back here. Um, the, uh, the roadway improvements include um, uh, constructing uh, four turnouts along the segment of the county portion. Um, one of the turnouts will require some minor grading, approximately 135 cubic yards of grading uh, due to its location um, adjacent to a, an embankment. Otherwise, uh, roadway improvements include paving repairs uh, within the existing paved roadway where necessary um, to meet fire standards, fire lane striping, no parking signs, and uh, all work within the 
for the roadway improvements will occur within the existing 43 foot wide um, uh, roadway, private roadway, I should say. So uh, just taking kind of a step back, the project area, um, as you can see here, a majority of the parcel consists of hills that form a relatively flat valley through the center of the parcel where development constructed uh, in the 1960s for agricultural purposes exists. And this is where the greenhouses and water tank um, location is. And the rest of the development in uh, this valley area um, consists of uh, barns and metal buildings and storage warehouses that have all been used for agricultural purposes. Uh, historically, um, agricultural use on the property has included growing orchids, ornamental flowers, and cherry trees. Staff has evaluated the project for conformance with the applicable general plan policies, local coastal program policies, and zoning regulations and found the project to be um, in conformance with, with each set of policies and regulations. Um, the policies and standards uh, regulate a number of resources, uh, including biological resources, uh, general plan and local coastal pro program policies seek to minimize significant adverse impacts within and adjacent to sensitive habitats. A biological report prepared by Soul Ecology for the property um, concluded that on-site development associated with this project is over 180 feet from the nearest sensitive habitat, which is a stream channel. Uh, specifically, uh, the local coastal program requires establishment of a 30 foot buffer zone from riparian corridors and permits limited uses and activities within these buffer zones, including impervious surfaces and repair and maintenance of roadways when no feasible um, alternative locations exist. For off-site roadway improvements, uh, the biological study concluded that there are no direct impacts to biological resources along the roadway. Uh, there are some riparian areas um, associated with the culvert, with some culverted drainages that exist on either side of the, the roadway segment. Um, and you can see here in this photo, um, the four turnout locations and the details to each of those locations. So um, turnout two and four specifically, you can see uh, the hatched areas in the detail show um, mapped riparian corridor, again associated with some drainage culverts. Um, the Proposed turnouts have been cited and designed to avoid sensitive habitats. Um, as I mentioned, they are within the 30 foot buffer, uh, but um, pursuant to the local coastal program, um, given uh, this work would be consistent with the local coastal program allowance, policy allowance for um, impervious surface and roadway, roadway repair and maintenance activities. Uh, additionally, um, conditions of approval have been included to um, ensure that there are no impacts to any riparian corridors or to any wildlife resources when this work is being completed, which includes uh, pre-construction surveys and um, exclusionary fencing around these areas. The project conforms with the visual resources policies of the general plan and the local coastal program. Uh, the property, as you can uh, hopefully see here in this photo, is surrounded by hills um, contained on the, the same property. So it's minimally visible. Um, it's not obtrusive to the area. Uh, due to the existing topography surrounding the property and the project site specifically, um, and it's distance from Highway 1, which is uh, it's over a half mile from Highway 1. Uh, the project is uh, not visible 
from any public view sheds or residential uh, zoned areas. The two greenhouses that are um, being legalized as part of this project are less than 18 feet in height, uh, where 36 feet is the maximum allowed height within the PAD zoning district. The greenhouses are just of simple uh, construction and design. They're constructed of metal hoop truss and framing with non-reflective um, coverings, as you can see here in these photos. The water tank is less than 11 feet in height and made of corrugated metal and a condition of approval has been included in the recommended uh, findings and conditions to ensure that the exterior finish of the water tank is non-reflective. There are a few uh, segments or swaths of prime agricultural lands on the property as shown on this slide. Uh, the PAD, Plant Agricultural District, uh, prioritizes the types of agricultural uses on prime agricultural land and allows uh, kind of secondary agricultural uses on prime agricultural land subject to the issuance of a PAD permit which is being sought under this application um, as non-soil dependent greenhouses on prime agricultural land requires a PAD permit. The project has been reviewed for conformance with the applicable uh, general plan, local coastal program, and zoning regulation policies and standards for agricultural resources. There are no alternative sites on the project parcel due to the topographic, sorry, um, constraints um, which limit development to that central uh, valley, which is relatively flat um, compared to the surrounding um, hills, which are designated other lands. Um, the project area is, as I mentioned, is bordered by these hills, uh, which makes it infeasible to locate, um, reasonably locate development um, on those steeply sloped hillsides. Uh, the location of the project doesn't, does not diminish or impair agricultural activity or productivity of any surrounding lands. It's pretty self-contained within that valley area. And uh, the project does support the clustering of agricultural development on the property within this centrally located valley area. The project will continue uh, to support commercial crop production uh, with supportive improvements to facilitate and to support agricultural use in an efficient and safe manner. The owners are also um, will be reactivating and maintaining 23,000 square feet of commercial cherry orchards on the property. And uh, the parcel is under Williamson Act contract. Uh, the property was placed in Williamson Act contract in 1966 and currently remains under contract. Uh, the county has reviewed the project for and the parcel for compliance with the Williamson Act and has determined that the parcel does comply with the Williamson Act regulations. The project is in conformance with the water supply policies of the general plan and the water supply criteria of the zoning regulations. The property has historic water rights to Frenchman's Creek and are authorized to divert over 10 acre feet of water per year from Frenchman's Creek, which is um, pumped to this reservoir um, at the top of the hill on the property. Um, and uh, that reservoir then provides the water to the uh, greenhouse complex area and development. Uh, and that's um, been in place for, um, that system has been in place for a long time. Um, the total annual estimated water use for agricultural operations on the property, including the legalization of these two greenhouses uh, for ag operation uh, would not 
um, is estimated to be about four acre feet, which is well below the 10 acre feet that um, is uh, permitted. And the new water storage tank will uh, aid in efficient irrigation for the greenhouses. It essentially um, is a uh, water recycling system. So excess water um, runoff um, can be collected inside the greenhouses and filtered and circulated back through the system. The project site is located in a very high ha fire hazard severity zone. Uh, the San Mateo County Fire Department has reviewed and conditionally approved the project for water supply, flow, and access. Uh, the project uh, consists of non-habitable structures uh, to support agricultural activity and the number of persons expected on the project site at any time is relatively low due to this type of use. The Agriculture Advisory Committee has reviewed and recommended approval of the project at their March 9th, 2020 uh, Ag Advisory meeting. A mitigated negative declaration, which included the subject project scope, was adopted on November 15th, 2019. At the time, the county issued uh, initial cannabis cultivation licenses for cultivation within legal greenhouses on site. Uh, pursuant to Section 15164 of the California Environmental Quality Act guidelines, staff has prepared an addendum to the adopted mitigated negative declaration for minor corrections and clarifications. And that addendum is included as attachment or as Section C of the staff report. Um, the uh, Addendum does not include any substantial changes or present any new significant impacts or add any new mitigation measures. And therefore, uh, staff um, has determined that the addendum um, does comply with uh, Section 15164 of the CEQA guidelines. The Planning Commission uh, is uh, being asked to consider the addendum with the adopted mitigated negative declaration and make findings which are outlined in attachment A of the staff report that there are no new significant effects, major revisions, or new mitigation measures, and therefore further environmental review is not required, which staff believes to be true. And so staff's recommendation today is that the Planning Commission approve the Coastal Development Permit and Plan Agricultural District Permit, County File Number PLN 2018-00330 by making the required findings and adopting the conditions of approval in Attachment A of the staff report. And that concludes my presentation and I'm available for questions. Thank you, Sumer. A uh, very nice presentation. Uh, I do have one question right off the bat. This morning we got an email from a neighboring farm and I could not figure out the location of the farm and to yes. the project and are, they, are those concerns on county land where we have some say or is it all in city land? So you, could you help me with that letter? Yes, the, um, the letter received was from a property owner at, I believe, 780 Frenchman's Creek Road, which is the property just inside of the city limit. Um, let me pull up a map I had here. Sorry. <laughs> so from this map, um, the that property, 780 Frenchman's Creek Road, is this property here. Um, and this is, if you can see this dashed line here, basically the um, this property line 
of their property is the city county border. So that property is just inside of the city limits. And here's the parcel. So it's this segment from their property on is the county portion. I'm sorry, I forgot to unmute myself. We have, uh, uh, first, thank you for the, the, the update. We have no jurisdiction from the Highway 1 to the city limits, correct? That's correct. I did take a ride out there on Monday. Uh, uh, that road is se severely degraded. Um, I did notice they were asking for speed bumps and stuff for that. Uh, and traffic, I don't think I saw anybody exceed 20 miles per hour simply because of the potholes. The, also, there is a speed limit sign that says 25 on there. I did go all the way up on the road to where it says keep out, and this means you, uh, which I presume is at the border of the applicants area. Uh, traffic was significant, which I also did surprise me. That just an observation on a Monday morning is uh, the amount of cars on the road, going in the road and leaving the road, but it didn't seem to be going to the applicant's property, but I was just for um, reference, more than I would expect on that type of road. Mm -hmm. And uh, also for reference, the Next Valley East is where I lived for three years. So I actually know the dirt road going through the property because I had made excess back in the 1970s. Um, do any of the other um, commissioners have questions? And I'll start off with Commissioner Santa Cruz. Yes, um, Commissioner, I have a couple of questions. Um, and, and some of them relate to what you were saying regarding the limits of the, uh, of the project and location. Uh, based on what I was reading, it's, um, it looks like this project, uh, it may be require a different jurisdiction, jurisdiction permits. Uh, in 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 I I, I want to know from um, Summer if I, if she may can uh, clarify for me um, if we approve this project what will be the consequences of I think it's Half Moon Bay you said that falls into the category of the approval of the permit and it wouldn't make sense to approve one project if we don't have a hard date in terms of the jurisdictions uh, 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 that may be required to approve the total. Uh, uh, concept of this project. That's, uh, um, let me see. Yeah, that's what may be uh, my main concern. Uh, and the other one deals with the standard of access that you were, that you were discussing, Commissioner. Um, if, it, if, if, uh, um, if Summer can kind of like clarify what would be, what would be the consequences of approving a project that required two, juris two jurisdiction permits and if one city or, or, or county would not approve, what will be the consequence of, uh, at, at the very end? Yes, Commissioner Santa Cruz, thank you. Um, first, the uh, roadway improvements uh, within the city are the first portion of the roadway um, does require the city of Half Moon Bay approval through either a, um, through their standard permitting process for um, that type of work. And the applicant I know has been working with the city of Half Moon Bay and with the property owners along that segment of the roadway um, and with the fire department as well uh, to, um, to seek those permits. I would need to defer to the applicant as to where exactly they're at in that stage of the process. 
Um, we do, for the county, we do have the jurisdiction of only that portion in the county. And in terms of approving um, the applicant getting, obtaining one approval and not the other, um, it is the applicant's responsibility to obtain all necessary permits that they are required to do the improvement work. Um, and so if for some reason they were unable to obtain the city of Half Moon Bay's uh, approval, um, they would essentially, I think, not be able to proceed forward with the, the project. So, Summer, in other words, if, if, we, um, if we decide to review and, and approve this project, we can have a contingency clause that will require the approval of the Half Moon Bay in order to proceed with the total approval. I think that you could put a condition of approval um, as a disclosure that they shall seek um, and obtain all approvals from the city of Half Moon Bay for that portion of work within the city. Okay, okay. Another question that I have. Um, uh, before we move on, could I uh, jump in on this? Because I think there's a couple points raised that are um, worthy of further discussion. Um, what we can require of an applicant is based on an, a nexus to the impact that their project will have and the mitigation that we require of them to address that impact needs to be proportional to the impact. I think in the situation that we have here, and I think the person who wrote this letter acknowledges it, we have an applicant who's been very generous and proactive in trying to address the roadway needs that serve other people on the road. And in fact, they volunteered to you know, pay for improvements um, and to seek the necessary approvals that arguably go beyond just the impact of this project. So I just want to, um, uh, put a word of caution out there in terms of what we require of the applicant before they can proceed because it needs to be both connected to the impact of their project and proportional to that impact. Okay, um, and another question that I have uh, either for, Steve, for you, Steve, or for Summer is the Williamson Act. That will require a 10-year contract with the, with the uh, landowner um, so I assume that you guys had that on record that they already have signed that 10 year contract. Yeah, um, so the Williamson Act contracts run with the, run with the land and they automatically, automatically renew every year. So um, every year it gets extended for another 10 years. And so this contract was placed by the former owner. It continues to be in place and it will continue until such a time that the applicant or the county goes through the non-renewal or cancellation process. So the contract is in place and staff's concluded that the activities proposed by the project are consistent with the terms of that contract. So for my own clarification, if um, somebody uh, go into automatic contract, so for 10 years, every year will, will uh, renew. So if I renew this year automatically, next year I decided not to renew, I still have to comply nine years? That's correct. That's the okay. way the Williamson Act works. Okay, great. Thank you, Tim. I acknowledge your head. <laughs> thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Commissioner Ramirez, any questions? Uh, yeah, um, just uh, along the lines of uh, what the uh, Commissioner Santa Cruz was saying, I would like to hear from the uh, applicant with regards to where they are um, with the application for the Half Moon Bay uh, permit for that road, um, which I think, uh, you know, we should, in, in my opinion, you know, we, we uh, approve what is our part of uh, this particular permit. And obviously Half Moon Bay has their own way of, uh, um, you know, um, getting theirs. Um, the, my question, my <laughs> subsequent question has to do with regards to water, water rights. Um, and I see that uh, they have a pretty significant amount of water allocated to this uh, uh, property. 
and they anticipate that they will only use about 4.0 uh, acre feet. Does this, and I, I, I'm not sure if actually, uh, in summer actually uh, clarify this. Um, the uh, 4.0, is that only for the use of the cannabis or does this also include all of uh, the, um, what, what would be needed for the additional uh, agriculture on the whole um, area? So, yeah, so that's, that's my question. Summer? Yes, Commissioner. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, thank you. Um, I, would I think I would need to defer to the applicant to clarify that. I uh, believe it is the entire agricultural operation um, that would be um, supported on the property, but I would like to defer to the applicant to clarify that. Okay, we'll wait for the applicant. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, we're here. We would like us to speak. Uh, yeah, that is accurate. That is all the water that will be needed for all the cannabis operations on the facility. And then to answer your question about the city of Half Moon Bay, um, you can, well, I could have our legal chime in as well, but it's not needed. We, the last eight months has been, uh, you know, collaborating on road work plans with the neighbors. Um, you know, we want to make sure everybody's happy with the road work that's happening. Um, we've been through a lot of comments with them, all of them positive, nothing really detrimental to the project. We finally reached the stage where all owners are happy with the road work plans, uh, essentially ready to submit to the city. The most recent plans really involved adding speed humps in certain areas where uh, the, the, the other owners wanted. Um, but, you know, this, this hearing today was actually a big uh, critical point uh, to us because we were going to, you know, submit to the city uh, on Friday, on, on, on this week, as soon as at right after. Um, pending to see what the, what, the, what the Planning Commission had to say about it. Great, uh, thank you. Thank you for that answer. Any more questions, um, Commissioner? No, not for me, no. Okay. All right. Commissioner Ketchum, do you have any questions of staff? Yes, thank you. Yes, thank you. Um, about the, the road, so there was a query on next door. Someone was asking about access to open space hiking via Frenchman's Creek Road, and if anybody knew about that. And uh, this conversation brings that to mind with this about there's so much traffic there. And so maybe the applicant could tell us, but um, who, who, what properties have access uh, if this is a private if this is private property, it's not a, a, a public right of way. Um, is there any signage earlier on on the road? For, for example, for these queries on next door saying private property, is it not a public, you know, anything like that? Because apparently the community doesn't realize how private it is. And then it also does seem like, I mean, I understand the, um, the arrangement here to get the road segments improved in order to get this project, but over the long term, it would seem a formal maintenance agreement among the property owners that rely on this road would be needed. I understand that's not part of our process today, but uh, it, it does seem like there's some problems here that could be sorted out. Yeah, actually, um, along with the submittal of our plans, a lot of the owners wanted uh, a kind of a release and a, a maintenance plan moving forward. And we've told uh, you know the the other owners, long Frenchmen, that we would take off take on the significant chunk of the maintenance, somewhere between seventy to eighty percent of it. Um, and so that's where we are on that. And as far as signage, uh, Ed would want to. Yeah. So basically, it, uh, from after Casey's, we're sure that it's a, a private road going back into our property and Ananda Farms as well. There's three property owners that have access: the Slater, Keat, Keat. Uh, Ananda Farms and us and the FAA and it's no trust there's multiple no trespassing signs all the way along the road and we have had hikers and people come up back and usually they get stuck at the blue gate there's an FAA gate at the top of the hill and sometimes when the FAA are usually up here you know once or twice a week along with PG&E doing tree work and maintenance and stuff like that 
And uh, sometimes people get stuck behind there and we have to let them out. But essentially it's private and, you know, no one. The signage is there and then there's a phone number for my cell in case, uh, you know, somebody does get lost. And then also another parcel to access is our personal home right here on 511 Frenchman's, which is actually behind this, the project. Um, it's the only residential property that's passed this oh, okay. operation. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I guess on the facility itself, it's a private road. The only people allowed access are the owners of 511 Frenchman's, FAA. our personal home, and the FAA, and then PG&E the fire department, uh, the city of Half Moon Bay has used the blue gate. We don't even have access to that blue gate, to be At honest. At the top of the hill. At the top of the hill. It connects down. Um, I think there's another access point there, but they'll use it to go some to, to the FAA Mountain tower. or the FAA tower on, on, on the Schuyler's Peak. And hikers is a big problem for us. We post it on Google, you know, no hikers up here. It's a private road. I've even requested to Google to put that there's a gate on the road and, you know, not say that there's an access um, but you know, it's bound to happen every now and then somebody's going to, you know, make a wrong yeah, turn. I have or... somebody come up once every two weeks or something and we just turn them around. So that's not really the source of all the traffic people talk about on the road. No, no I mean, well, this, you know, but a lot, a lot has been, I mean, at least lately has been vegetation removal, PG&E, maybe tree trimming. Uh, we, we just had six trees taken out of the property. And, uh, and then, and then in us, our, you know, it, of course. Yeah, with well, you know, there's a horse ranch operation that's, you know, a large operation. There's our operation, which, you know, we've got 20 cars here or so during the week. And then this is the high season right now. Uh, and then, you know, there's uh, uh, Greenheart Farms, whose business is up over, you know, 70, 80% right now with COVID-19 as their home delivery food. So their truck use has increased recently. Um, and then Ananda Farms has a homestead and farm at the back as well. So, you know, there's all, and there's all four of us that have uh, operations that are going on. And uh, just to go back on the road for a second, you know, Anise and I have spent the uh, over, over the last year, uh, you know, working with the Half Moon Bay City, the fire department, three separate neighbors. And we finally come to a plan that's ready to submit on Friday. Uh, we've already contributed you know, over you know, $80,000 in surveying, comments, legal, BKF engineers has uh, coordinated the road plans, and we're going to be contributing another 200000 to the actual improvements of the road. Um, and then the neighbors, there's two neighbors out of the three neighbors along that have uh, verbally agreed to chip in 25000 each. And then uh, we're going to be taking over most of the road maintenance, and we've coordinated as a lead party of the road to together the road maintenance as well as to point all the plans. Thank you. Commissioner Gupta, do you have any questions? Uh, yes, um, I have a question for the applicant. Um, so uh, going along the same lines about this private road, um, uh, you mentioned that there's more traffic right now because of like PG&E trucks going by, clearing the brush and uh, other maintenance type of things. So uh, is this something that's happening more recently or does that go on all the time? So it's been going on all the time, especially since PG&E have had the bankruptcy file earlier, uh, sorry, last year. There was about 20 trucks, you know, 20 trucks, vehicles, ATVs that they were sending up, you know, for a good three months. Daily? Every yeah. day, yeah, daily. The, there's a line here that starts here that supplies a lot of Half Moon Bay City with their power. So if one of the <clears throat> parcel goes down, you know, a big chunk of Half Moon Bay goes down. So it's a critical line that they have on our facility. They've even come in with helicopters and flown over multiple times. And yeah, dropped the equipment. And dropped equipment. So just giving you an example. But it is also, you know, the high season for like, you know, our, our operation here. And then also and the COVID-19 is we do have carpool, um, carpool as we've hired, you know, many locals in town uh, to work. And so there's carpool has stopped because of COVID-19. And so everyone's driving in their own cars as part of our SOP. But previously before COVID-19, uh, you know, people were carpooling in, especially the we locals. Had and it was part of our policy to keep traffic down. So, um, you know, there's some external factors right now that uh, are, you know, have increased our, our usage, but as things calm down over the next, you know, eight weeks with the high season coming down, 
uh, for the nursery operation and then COVID-19 kind of fading out over the next few months, we should be able to substantially reduce our traffic flow. Okay, so uh, I probably missed uh, some last part of your comment, uh, but uh, if you uh, could be a little patient. So uh, other than these other vehicles going, which are not truly, truly going to your property, um, what are the other activities which brings vehicles to your property? So we, we would do, you know, public uh, tours to the county and the city, but now we've sh stopped all tours. Uh, we're not open to the public. That's the main thing. Um, we're wholesale business here. So uh, honestly, the, 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 the traffic that's not related to the day-to-day -day operation would be, you know, meetings, um, tours with the the Other county, city jurisdictions, um, all collaborators that we're working yeah. with, and then Anise and I, uh, you know, we our main residence is the 511 property, which is the neighboring parcel in the back of the valley, and you know, we live here and have you know yes. a few friends over every now and again. So, Obviously, yeah. not right now, but uh, there's definitely you know a few cars contributed every day to our residence, personal residence. So, so what do you mean by the tour of the property? I mean, like, for example, we give tours to the county, to the city officials that are wondering how the operation works. Uh, we, we have like oh, a... This is, sorry, yeah, this in, is in, in connection with the um, application? Yeah, it, previously. There hasn't been any recently, but, you know, we're just giving you examples. Previously, of, uh, okay. You know, there has been tours for the city of Half Moon Bay. You know, the, the, we have given tours to representatives of the county previously. The, you know, but that's not, it's not any by any means a huge number. Traffic number, no. Um, yeah, I can't imagine that. I think it would right. be the personal, you know, if I have family coming to visit or, you know, friends coming to visit my house, a couple cars a day added. But yeah, you know, there's, we have delivery, yeah. deliveries going out from the operation, from the nursery operation uh, on a, you know, every other day basis. Uh, and, you know, they're in small trucks that shouldn't have, you know, very minimal impact to the road. Uh, and then, you know, other than that, it's just, you know, operational stuff. Um, and then I'd also like to mention that, you know, a lot of, since we own the adjacent residential property, uh, it's two, three bedroom house. We house two, 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 three two houses that are three bedrooms each. Uh, we house at least four of our uh, managers and employees In here the of the operation. Um, so that, that reduces our that reduces a lot because, you know, they live here behind the facility don't actually have to commute. They don't, live on, they don't live on the farm, they live on our personal residence, residential. Should uh, all the people working on your uh, farm, greenhouses, whatever else, maintenance is there, uh, maintaining the property, they all live no, on the- all, No, not all of them. I would say 70%. No, well, 70% of our operation. Yes. But then there's also, so we have a sublease uh, uh, that we should maybe talk Absolutely. about this a little bit. Sorry, a lease to uh, Dark Heart Nursery who hold the other cannabis license on here and they're the, the nursery license and we're the cultivation license. And so our operation, you know, has a significantly, you know, we only have about eight employees. Uh, and, you know, they only come in for three, day, three days a week. We have full, full uh, capacity of our employees. And then four days a week, we only have four or five employees. Uh, we do have um, uh, seasonal employees that come in during trim time, uh, but they only come in for, you know, a few days and they all stay in our back house. So they're not leaving and going and they all come in the same car together. It's like a kind of a subcontractor group uh, company that you pay. And then Dark Heart, the nursery operation, they have, you know, a few more, they have more employees than us uh, and none of their employees are, are staying on site. And we actually have them here with us. So if you have any uh, questions for them, you know, uh, there's Jen, Jen who heads up the, the operation. Jen, you want to raise your hand real quick? Uh, and then there's Mel who works with Jen and they're, they're our tenants of our property since Anise and I are the property owners. But uh, they uh, have, and they have their own license. But again, thank this, you, uh, thank you, you very much for uh, explaining that. Okay, so how long have you been the owner of this property? Uh, well, we put it in escrow back in 2017, November, November, and we spent a year, a lot of cleanup. A year, a year, we spent a year and a half cleaning the property up. There's a number of uh, 
violations that so we since have. 2017 yeah yeah but we closed escrow in in 2018 uh march yeah so okay. a little over a year ago yeah okay great great so um so my next question is what do you expect the, uh, the duration of your project once all the approvals take place what, 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 what do you mean by that how long this operation will last? How long, how long is it going to take to, uh, from start to finish to complete this project? To, to, to complete the road or the, this specific planning commission hearing? Uh, no, uh, uh, to complete the road and the construction of uh, uh, the uh, water tank, so water storage tank. Uh, we have promised uh, the neighbor that we were going to complete the road within 90 days of the the CDX being approved by the city of Half Moon Bay, and we're putting okay. an application on Wednesday. It's finally finalized. A chemist can can chime in if you want, but she has been dealing with one of the neighbor's uh, attorneys, and they're releasing a form today because Half Moon Bay City wanted all the neighbors to sign off on the road so that there was no liability to them. So. We're getting that final sign off. All the comments have been, uh, you know, handled. Yeah. And so that goes in Friday. As soon as the permit comes in for that, we've already paid a ten thousand dollar retainer to a contractor who has been agreed upon use uh, by the neighbors. And as soon as we have approval, we're going to start at that. So I couldn't give you a time frame, but you know, if we get approvals from the Half Moon Bay City, which we've been working with the fire department and the city over the last year on this road application, it should be a uh, fast, reasonable time approval for the permit. So if that comes in, we will start uh, the road improvements immediately and we'll have the, the everything else done yeah. in concur concurrently. In, in case that's, I, I misunderstood your question, what's next or what's when the project end? Uh, after these two greenhouses, there, there's no more cannabis cultivation on this facility, uh, more space to add. This is right. essentially it. Um, anything else would be traditional ag, the cherry trees, hay production, um, stuff like that. Okay, great, great. Um, so my uh, next question is that uh, I read in the report that this water storage tank construction has already started. Yes, so what happened was... It, uh, is that without permit? So we had applied for a permit with the uh, with the county, uh, you know, over a year ago, and there was six different permits associated with the one building permit. And uh, Anise and I were, you know, we made a mistake by starting starting it while we had the permit in place because there was no more comments from the building and planning department on that specific permit, the water tank permit. So we thought we would, had the green light to go ahead. When we found out that we didn't, you know, uh, we, we stopped. So there was a violation on place because of that, but then we've also cleared out that violation because we got the, the building permit. That was the condition of removing the violation was to get that building permit issued. So we did that. We might have jumped the gun a little bit, but, but as of today, um, all the violations have yeah, been there's cleared no out. And any we, issues we, with we fixed our uh, mistake. Okay. And my last question is that uh, would you have? some um, additional work to do on your greenhouses to make them legal? Mm, uh, as far as we know, the uh, building plan, we work, uh, our architect Ed Love and their office has worked, you know, over the last year and a half. And this can be it's confirmed it. with Steve Monowitz uh, to make sure that those the greenhouses were up to code and acceptable to the current standards. And that has all been signed off pending uh, this planning commission approval. So no, there isn't anything other than electrical improvements. Some stormwater treatment and the, the, bio, yeah, the, the bioretention yeah, area. That's, that's below the greenhouses, but specifically to do with the greenhouses, there'll be an electrical permit that will be put in place. Uh, but that is a, a, I don't, I, it's not, that's an over the counter permit. So other than that, everything else was already, you know, uh, good to go. Yeah, all the structural calculations, the soil tests, everything calced out. He he did he built the greenhouses, you know, up to code. He just didn't get the permit. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I mean, they're ready. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Do any no the, more questions. Thank you. Do any of the commissioners have a follow-up? It looks like Commissioner Ramirez. Yes. Um, 
So are you uh, already operational? Are you producing already? Yes, we've had our, our license since November of, of last year, but that was for, but that all, license all the covers houses. the legal buildings. Um, what we're talking about here is a, a buildings that were illegally built that we're not operating in today. Uh, so but, you, yeah. so you, you're not producing in those uh, illegal buildings at the moment, no. I, I would assume. As of today, they're empty. They're just vacant. Got it, got it. Okay, so now due to the nature of the business that you guys are in, and it seems like, you know, uh, I don't know how much the public actually knows that you're there and, and what kind of a business that you're operating. Um, do you foresee a need for um, added security? So just to talk about security for a second, you know, we're isolated in this valley that, uh, you know, is a mile also from the highway one, uh, we have a gate that everybody, all employees have an app and they're all segmented out. So managers get sun access during certain times all the time. So other employees are only have access during certain times. We have 51 cameras on site, laser, like laser fences that will go around the property that if there's a break in the laser, will give us a notification, you know, we do have facial recognition capabilities on all of our cameras. So if it gives us a notification, if you know, somebody is not registered, uh, there's license plate readers on the, 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 any cars coming in and out of the property that are, you know, read it through fog night, uh, the whole yeah. lot. There's night vision cameras. Um, we personally live on site as well, but not yeah. on site, but you know, to the adjacent property. So, yeah. uh, we have full access to the cameras yeah. and the alarm and, system the whole time. Yeah, security did come up in our November when we did get approved. We had to show. And then we also are signed up, subscribed to a third party monitoring system. Okay. They'll monitor, you know, heat also in the greenhouses for fire, you know, smoke, uh, burglary. Uh, and they, they, they uh, connect directly to the police department. Fire department can make a call if needed. Uh, but Did since November, sorry. Oh, and I just want to pipe in. This is Cam at Steinmetz Legal yeah. Council for Hoffman Grow, and the, there is a full um, security plan that was part of the condition of approval of the licenses that was issued in November. So that's covered under the licenses for operation, the security plan, and that's a county requirement on file with the county. Oh, okay. excuse, uh, excuse me, Miss Mr. Ramirez. Uh, who is Cam Steinmetz? Who are you? I'm legal counsel for Half Moon Grow. For for Mrs. Bishara? For the applicant. Okay, yeah, because I, I just like for people to recognize themselves. Maybe I didn't well, hear I you well because when legal. people talk over it, it yeah. it's not uh, helpful for me. Uh, the same thing with Mr. Bishara. If your partner take turns in talking to you because when you both talk at the same time, it's kind of confusing. Okay, yeah. sorry. Thank you. Uh, all right. Um, I think you've uh, uh, clarified my question, uh, the concern that I actually had about security. Okay. I think, again, because of the nature of the business that you're in. Thanks. Do any other commissioners have any follow-up questions? Seeing none, I'll talk directly to the applicant. Do you have a presentation or want to make comments directly to the commission? Um, you know, I didn't, I wanted to keep it really brief and very uh, big picture um, because, you know, we wanted to a lot more time at the end if we needed a rebuttal to certain things that came up. Um, just wanted to, you know, just a brief overview introduction. My name is Anis Bishara. And I come from the real estate industry, went into cannabis with Edward, my partner. He'll talk in a second. And uh, we started an operation in Humboldt that was very successful. He'll talk to you about that. And we came down here in a Half Moon Grow in Half Moon Bay to start this operation to be a role model to the county as, you know, the first uh, cannabis operation here. You know, we're very open book. Um, we're not trying to cut any corners or bend any rules. Uh, there's a, you know, a lot of, the, like we said before, a lot of what we did the first few years of being here is cleaning up the property, get rid of all the environmental waste, uh, health and safety codes, um, and just bringing, revamping the property to a place where people would want to work and, and it could be successful. Um, also, I mentioned that we own uh, the adjacent property here on 511 Frenchman's, uh, where we live personally and we house our managers. Um, and so the reason why we're here today on this uh, planning commission hearing is, you know, like I said, we're trying to clean up this property 
and you know legalizing buildings is obviously a, a main concern um, for fire reasons for fit safe and 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 health reasons not only for the farm but also for us as adjacent neighbors we want to ensure that you know everything is up up to code and um and so <clears throat> a lot of the things we've done here you know we, we invite a lot of county city you know we're not trying uh, right. to hide anything and but as but now because of COVID you know we haven't done any tours um, and so I'd like to Ed, Ed is going to say a few words he's my 50 50 business partner uh, in this venture and so, so my, my name's Edward Wilkinson uh, before I go on uh, to give a brief background on myself I would just like to add the fact that um, you know these lean greenhouses that we're legalizing uh, you know any future owner of this property or future use of this property whether it would be cannabis or you know, ornamentals or flower production or anything like that, these greenhouses would have to be legalized at some point in order to use them. Uh, so just wanted to add that point in after Anise. So my background is, I've got, you know, got an MBA in business. Uh, I moved here 10 years ago. Uh, I started my project up in Humboldt. I was the second new project, 12th overall project out of 2,300 applicants in 2016 to be approved by Humboldt County as a cannabis license. We, uh, Anise was a partner, a small shareholder actually invested with me at that time. Uh, I sold that farm last year to come down and focus on this project. So we've been working on this project with the county, like Anise said, since 2017, November on revitalizing the property, bringing economic, uh, you know, in, uh, economic presence back to the property because you know the the agricultural uh, uh department and has suffered over the you know few years and this is a, a use that will be able to uh you know increase you know uh, work and jobs and stuff like that so i believe you know we've been a, a help to the local community uh there's been multiple nurseries that have closed down here that are non-cannabis and we've actually hired uh and and dark Hot have hired multiple of the uh, of those employees so replacing kind of the old um, agriculture with the new agriculture as this has become a, a legal activity uh, I, as far as some other points that I would like to talk about you know the amount of cleanup work that we've done on the property has been immense uh, we have a super state-of-the-art which any of you are welcome to come over anytime and inspect a water treatment center so we actually um, collect all of our runoff that's injected into our grow medium that then gets recycled back through our water treatment system. So it's a, it's a four part uh, water treatment system. There's a media filter, UV filter, carbon filter, and RO filter. So that gets re, re, uh, we reuse all of our water that we actually run off that the plants don't suck up. And same with the nursery operation, they have a whole catchment system that re recycles all of their water. So our water consumption is as sophisticated as the state gets in, in as far as cannabis growing goes. We, um, and yeah, so we've spent you know a, two years on this project and this is one of the next steps that we're at right now. There's been many other steps and hurdles that we've had to jump through and work, we've been working diligently with the county. And I'd just like to introduce our team before I jump off. And if any of them have any question, uh, uh, anything to say, then I would love for them to chime in. So we've got Camus. Uh, Camus is a land use attorney. She's been working in the county uh, with the county on a, num a number of other projects, and she's been coordinating with uh, the, uh, mainly on the road and to do with our cannabis license and making sure the neighbors are happy and we get all the right documentation from them. Uh, we have Roland and uh, Dale from uh, BKF Engineers. Uh, they've worked with us from the start of the inception of this project. Uh, we hired them uh, right at the beginning to ensure that we were above board and a role model in all of our application processes as they, you know, are one of the top uh, civil engineers in, in the county and Bay Area, in our opinion. Uh, we've, I'm not sure if Ed Love's on here, but we've hired Ed Love as our architect who's worked on the coast and, you know, he uh, knows the county and county regulations very well. And we have Dana Riggs as our biologist environmentalist. She knows um, Frenchman's Creek Road very well. She actually works with a multiple of the other neighbors and knows the water source and Frenchman's Creek uh, probably more so than you know any other biologist. So we had her as the expert on that to make sure that we weren't gonna have any impact to the environment. 
And all in all, you know, from the previous owner who, you know, created all these violations, we have, you know, spent an immense amount of time and money making sure that, you know, our project is in full compliance and we want to be continue to be a role model for the county. And uh, you know, by being the role model for the county, we expect, you know, everyone else that's uh, applying in the county to be able to step up to kind of our standard and that we are going to set for the county. So uh, Dale, Camus, Roland, Dana, if there's anything else during our time, uh, if you guys wanna chime in, this is a good time. Uh, thank you for my, the time. Thank you. I, I had a question, uh, Chair. Go ahead. Um, are there any other properties on Frenchman Creek in your neighborhood who are also cultivating cannabis? No, no. There's one other project in the county that just got approved and that's in Pescadero. I believe the company is called Cali Dutch. Um, and they just got approved a few weeks ago, I think, uh, if I'm not mistaken, the MND was adopted and Steve Monowitz uh, probably could um, chime in on that. Uh, and we're the only two licensed operators in the county. Uh, there are a number of hemp operators that um, directors Monowitz might be able to have some input on, but, but none on Frenchmen. Not none on Frenchmen's and no and no no other cannabis licensees. Thank you. And uh, before you took ownership, was there any cannabis uh, no. growing on your property on yeah. that property? It was an orchid. But Orchid and cherry farm previously. Only cherry. Orchid and cherry. Okay. Thank you. Any other commissioners have any questions of the applicant? No. I uh, seeing none. Uh, we'll go to the public portion. So there is uh, rules about doing a raise a hand. Um, that is an opportunity for people to log in for and raise their hands. So give them a few minutes for that. Not to rush this part of the process. That's correct. And um, <coughs> my colleague, um, Mr. Pierre Wall, can, can uh, let us know how that will work. Um, Thank you. Just give folks uh, some time to raise their hands. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Can you all hear me? Okay, perfect. Um, we are now opening public comments for item number one. If your hand is raised, your name will be called for this item. If you lower your hand after you, uh, I will lower your hand after you, you're done speaking. Um, those who are joining by telephone, please press star nine to raise your hand. And I believe we're giving five minutes per speak, speaker, correct? That's correct. Okay. Um, please go ahead, um, members of the public, raise your hand if you wanna speak on this item. Uh, Mr. Chair, as of right now, I have nobody has raised their hand. Give it a few more, it, second. more seconds. Okay, no speakers for this item, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. Sure. And without objection, I'll cl close the uh, public portion and move to. Uh, Further questions of staff, and if not, and then on to discussion. Um, can I interrupt? Would I need a roll call to close public comment? Can I, I second. Okay, uh, Janet, if I needs to to expedite it. Okay. Sorry, it took me a minute to unmute. Um, yeah, technically, all actions uh, at, at a teleconference meeting are to, are to be taken by roll call vote. Um, we have in the past relied upon unanimous consent um, and other more informal measures to open and close public hearings, but um, to be safe, I think it's wise to hold a roll call vote for uh, an action such as to close a public hearing. Thank you, Tim. Let's move the roll call. Commissioner Gupta. Aye. Commissioner Santa Cruz. Yes. Commissioner Ramirez. Aye. Commissioner Ketchum. Aye. Chairman Hansen. Aye. Thank you. With that portion closed, then we'll move on. To, does the uh, commission have any further questions of staff or anybody else? Nope. Nope. Any discussion? Nope. 
Uh, yeah, I'll I'll, uh, I'll say a couple of words on this. Um, well, I, I want to commend uh, the applicant um, for bringing this forward and legalizing, um, you know, whatever um, uh, problems uh, uh, there were on the property, and uh, and also, you know, um, to you know congratulate you on on uh, getting your your uh, license to operate legally um, here in the county, and. Um, yeah, I think you. you uh, it looks like you, you're, you're, you got all your ducks in a row, and uh, um, you know you, you, you will probably have a very successful operation. Um, and with that, I just want to reemphasize that I, you know, over the years I've kept um, an eye on with the situation in Humboldt County, and I know, and that's why my question with regards to water and stuff like that that uh, Humboldt County had a huge problem of the illegal activity that was up there um, and that was devastating not only, you know, the, the water sources, uh, but also, um, you know, the, the hills and uh, for the illegal operations that were happening out there. Um, I hope that, you know, who, I, I think there's still some, I've heard there's still, you know, a lot of illegal operation happening uh, in the area, and I hope everything you know comes uh, uh, and gets uh, regularized. So, for that, I mean, I'm I'm totally in support of your project, and uh, I wish you good luck. Okay. Any other comments? Um, to make a motion if it's if you're I, ready. I, I be, be, Okay, before the motion, I, I have a, 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 like a concern that I expressed initially when I was talking about the, um, the different jurisdiction permits required um, because of the fact that in the past uh, with this road, uh, there are people who are kind of like giving money to, to clean it and fix it because there was not a hard date where the, where the road, uh, should be completed and having those loose end for me it's kind of like uncomfortable in in moving into approving this project i just want to uh, uh throw that up 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 uh, up there thank you any other further lisa did you have comments oh i support the project and i'm ready to make the motion if if we're i would just like to make a comment. First of all, I would like to thank Summer for a very uh, detailed, complete uh, presentation. I think it was very well done, keeping our new mode in mind. Uh, you brought out the right kind of things. So thank you so much for that. Thank you. Uh, second, just a, a side question. Uh, Ed, I did not get your last name. My last name is Wilkinson. Wilkinson, okay. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, and I'm in support of the project. Thank so. Uh, I think we're ready. Yep, and I'll just on the, be clear. I th think you've done due diligence. I think you've been upfront, which I've always greatly appreciated. And uh, I think you'll be a Good addition to the neighborhood. So welcome, uh, used to live in that, excuse me, in that area. So uh, <clears throat> hearing, <clears throat> excuse me, a majority in support, can I get a motion to that effect? Yes, I move we approve the coastal development permit and planned agricultural permit, county file mm -hmm. number PLN 2018-00330 by making the required findings and adopting the conditions of approval in attachment A. I second that. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Um, roll call, please. Commissioner Gupta? Aye. Commissioner Santa Cruz? A no. Commissioner Ramirez? Aye. Commissioner Ketchum? Aye. Chairman Hansen? Aye. So we have a 4-1 vote, um, congratulations. And 
uh, we're, you go on to your next set of approvals. All right. Thank, thank you. you so much. Everybody. And thanks, commissioners and Summer, and Summer. for, for yeah. joining yeah. us and the, the county's talk. I miss this pandemic, and thank you. Congratulations. Thank well, you. Off to item number two, correspondence and other matters. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> Excuse me, please. Um, other than the correspondence that we received for the item that you just considered, uh, we did receive and Jenna forwarded to you um, a letter regarding the Cyp Cypress Point project. Um, attached to that email was a traffic study that's uh, been completed um, and we will address the issues that are raised by that study at the next hearing regarding that project. So unless there's questions about that correspondence you received, I'm ready to move to the next item. Okay, uh, so as far as the, the next meeting goes, um, I'm not recommending that we have a study session among other reasons because we have three items scheduled um, at this point. Uh, the first item is a permit for a new well at Utano State Park <coughs> for visitors to the park. Uh, the second item is an amendment to the local coastal program being requested by the Mid-Peninsula Open Space District and Peninsula Open Space Trust. Uh, the purpose of that amendment is to excuse public agencies from requirements to record agricultural and conservation easements when they undertake land divisions for the purposes of providing public access. So um, there's been a lot of interest in that project and I expect that there'll be um, a good turnout of folks who want to talk about the matters related to that. Um, finally, the third item is uh, permits and a negative declaration for a new home on La Honda Road. So that concludes uh, my report regarding the next meeting and I'll move on to the director's report if that's okay uh, with the chair. Dave, so we're yeah. not going to have uh, Cyprus on this one? No. Um, in fact, I, I was going to um, update you on Cyprus as part of the director's report. Go ahead. <laughs> sure. Um, but first, um, there's a couple things coming up uh, next Tuesday's board, item, uh, board meeting that I wanted to alert you to. Um, the first being an appeal of the Planning Commission's denial of the coastal development permit for the Purissima Cemetery. You may recall that the new um, alleged owner of the property has undertaken development without permits there. Those were uh, denied by the commission. The applicant has appealed that to the board. Um, we will also, the board will also be considering an appeal of the IFRON single family residential project. That was a new home in the mid coast urban area that required a non-conforming use permit because of the substandard lot size and uh, the opponent to that project has appealed the Planning Commission's approval to the board. Um, finally, we have a renewal of the contract with San Francisco Airport to manage the San Francisco Airport Roundtable Committee. That's the committee that addresses the impacts of San Francisco airport noise on surrounding communities. The airport provides funding to the county to oversee that committee. And so we're renewing our commitment to continue those efforts with uh, the airport. Um, so that's the items coming up on the board. Um, after that, we're going to be initiating some virtual workshops and meetings regarding Connect the Coast Side. And um, if you go to the Connect the Coast Side website um, on the Planning and Building Department, through the Planning and Building Department's website, you'll see the schedule for meetings that will start with an overview of the project and then we'll be having community specific or I should say area specific meetings where we're going to be addressing the proposed improvements in the northern part of the urban mid coast and then the southern part of the mid coast. So the schedule for those activities are available on our website and I'd be happy to answer any questions you have about that. Um, I, as you know, the Connect the Coast side um, has an indirect relationship to the Cypress Point project. Um, Connect the Coast side seeks to identify the long-term improvements that are needed not only to accommodate this project, but other development in the region. Um, going to back to Cypress Point, 
Um, there are other um, transportation improvements that will be required to make that project feasible that will be on a slightly different schedule than the long-term improvements um, proposed by Connect the Coside. And those uh, shorter term improvements um, are being refined as we speak right now. In fact, um, I'm going to be meeting with De uh, Department of Public Works and my staff after this meeting to make sure that we have a clear picture of what we will be presenting to the community and to you when we come back for Cypress Point in terms of the traffic mitigations that will accompany that project. So because we've needed to um, refine those details, we push back the hearing, the continued hearing on Cypress Point to June 10th at this point. So we have it penciled in for June 10th. Um, I can tell you that there's been um, concerns expressed by members of the community about continuing with hearings um, under the current situation. There's also concern about um, from community members who are worried about, you know, having to review, connect the coast side and participate at workshops at the same time that they're trying to prepare for the upcoming planning commission hearing on Cypress Point. Um, I, I'm sensitive to those concerns, but um, I'm also sensitive to the need for Mid Peninsula Housing to move on with their project. As you know, that they, they are holding an option to purchase that property that is costing them something in the order of $10,000 per month. So it's really important to them that we move forward with the Cypress Point hearings. And um, we believe it's equally important that we keep Connect the Coast Side moving forward as well. So um, unless there's questions about Cypress Point or Connect the Coast Side, I'll move on to um, the next item in my report. Seeing no questions, um, just wanted to update you on what's happening in the planning and building offices. Um, as you probably heard, there was um, a lifting of restrictions on construction by the health officer that has um, increased the workload of the planning and building department um, because all those applications that were in the pipeline that couldn't proceed with construction now were eligible to proceed. And so we've actually been quite busy in the planning and building department getting permits issued to people who want to start their projects. And the good news is we've been successful in providing these services in a manner that I think is consistent with the need to protect the health of our staff members and the general public. And we've done that by essentially providing all of our services remotely. Um, we have had staff going into the office as necessary to do certain things. One of those things being if we have to issue a permit for an application that was submitted before we were taking in electronic applications and we have to deliver the stamped approved plans, we make arrangements with the permittee for a specific time that they will come by the office to pick up the plans and the permit technician will drop off the approved permits and the stamp plans downstairs in order to avoid face-to-face -face contact. Um, I, I think at our last meeting, I expressed a desire to reopen our front counter to make sure that we're providing services to everyone who needs those services. Um, we're backing off from that a little bit for a couple of reasons. Um, primarily that, you know, we continue to be concerned about um, the spread of the virus. And we believe that restricting use of the elevators and the stairwells in the county office building to staff only will greatly limit the potential for spread. So, um, and then the other thing is that we found to date that we are able to provide the services we need to everyone because we are receiving phone calls from folks who are not able to navigate our electronic systems. And actually there's been quite a few sweet stories of my staff spending
quite a bit of time on the phone with applicants, walking them through step by step so they know how to get done what they need to do electronically. I've also received some very nice notes from applicants who are appreciative of the help they've received from my staff over the phone and also appreciative of the fact that the planning and building department has stayed open for business. That hasn't been across, uh, true across the board in other jurisdictions and our constituents have really valued the fact that we stayed open for business and are continuing to provide them those services. So um, at this point, the um, front counter will remain closed for the foreseeable future and we will continue to monitor our ability to provide our services effectively and we'll make adjustments as necessary to make sure everybody's receiving the services that they need. Um, so that's my update um, for today and I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Steve. Any, any questions? Ramirez, you need to turn on your phone. Uh, there, yeah. Uh, hey, just a quick uh, follow up uh, on that. So, are you doing um, inspections on site? On site inspections? Um, so, we are continuing with the video inspections. Um, okay. The video inspection platform has gotten very high uh, reviews from my inspectors. They really like it and they think it work, works effectively. We have run into limitations, however, um, both for code compliance inspections and tree inspections where it's important that, for example, our arborist to be able to see a tree in relationship to other things on the ground, which you just can't quite see through video inspections. So we are doing um, very limited site specific inspections. And when we do those inspections, we follow very stringent safety protocols. Oh, okay, well, thank you. Thank you for um, that. Um, uh, because it, I know there's, uh, you know, a lot of people out there that want to continue with their projects and want to make sure that, you know, they, they can successfully complete them. So it is very important. And I guess, you know, the, the time is right with the technology to be able to do a lot of these things. So I'm glad. Well, I am too. Um, you know, I've been trying to keep you at least um, generally updated on our efforts to improve our online permitting system. And um, this whole pandemic has been a real motivator to make that happen as quickly as possible. And I'm very pleased with the progress that's being made. And I expect that we will um, be in a position to be all electronic paperless by the end of the calendar year. That's, that's really good news, I think. Yeah. Okay. Steve? Yes. Um, the, on this Cypress point, um, I, I'm not sure if I understood uh, what, uh, what we have decided or uh, how we are moving forward with it. Okay. Um, so Cypress point, as you recall, you, we conducted the initial hearing, we made it through public comment, and the commission decided to continue the item to a date uncertain. Um, right. right now, we have tentatively scheduled that continued hearing for um, June 10th. Okay, so that's what the June 10th was. June 10th, okay. correct. Okay. All right, so what is holding us uh, back? Because we've been postponing it uh, for a few meetings now. Yes, um, well, as you heard at the first hearing, there's a lot of concerns about the impact of the project on traffic, circulation, and emergency evacuation. Um, you also heard staff take the position that while those are valid concerns, this LCP amendment is actually a reduction in the amount of development that could possibly occur on the site. So while staff doesn't believe that the LCP amendment really triggers the need to get down to the level of um, project specific mitigations at this stage in the process, because you will recall that there'll be a follow up coastal development permit if this LCP amendment is approved by the commission. And it's the staff's perspective that the detailed transportation mitigations need to be identified when we issue the permit for development, not at this LCP amendment stage. 
despite mm -hmm. staff's position on that matter, the commissioners asked us to be prepared to provide as you know detailed and specific information as we could at the next meeting. And so that's okay. what's held us up, is we have really been trying to pin down the project-specific traffic mitigation measures that we'll be able to report to you at the next meeting. And we needed to make sure that our Department of Public Works are on board with those um, mitigation measures and that the applicant is aware and on board with what those mitigation measures are. Um, we, we described them in broad terms at the last meeting, but in the interest of being responsive to the questions and issues that were raised at that hearing, we are um, trying to develop um, greater details uh, regarding that so we can answer those questions. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, another question that I had is, um, I don't exactly remember uh, the details of the project, but that was one of the projects that uh, Commissioner Ketchum uh, was very uh, interested in closing in a good time. Like she was talking about 90 days and I think we talked about four months. Has that project uh, scheduled sometime to come back? And do, uh, do you remember? Uh, well, I, I share the interest in moving this project forward as quickly as possible. In terms of specific time frames um, that um, Commissioner Ketchum might have suggested, I don't recall, and I'd be open okay. to hearing her thoughts okay. on that. Do, do any of the other commissioners remember that? Well, I had asked. Oh. Go, go ahead, Ms. Ketchum, sorry. I had asked for a, a date since this has been going on for so many years. And I'd asked for three months and there was some concern that um, might not be possible, didn't want to be pinned down. And I, I don't think we, the motion, uh, I, I guess I'd have to watch the video to see if it was actually a number of months in the motion as it turned out. But um, I think clearly from the discussion, there was agreement that this shouldn't be allowed to just drift along as it has. Okay. If I may also, uh, no, yeah, I, I don't think it, that it was not part of the motion, but it was definitely part of the, the comments that we had. Um, but the question is uh, right now, Steve, so do you foresee that we will be uh, conducting our uh, meetings like this for the foreseeable future? Yes. Okay. Yeah, because I, I mean, I, I have a big concern, you know, that uh, because of that particular item, that that we uh, make sure that, you know, people doesn't feel that we rushed, uh, or we were secretive about making our decision. So, and my concern is like, you know, making sure that everyone knows that if we're gonna have a meeting the way we're having it right now, that everyone will be totally aware that it's going to happen, it's gonna ha happen online. And so that we don't have, you know, some issues later on that they say, well, I never knew about it. He just went out and did it in, you know, the back room or something. So it, it is extremely important. And to me, I don't know if we need more time, but I think the time is not so important. What is important to me is that we actually get it right uh, to make sure that people understand that we vetted uh, for everybody and it was conducted properly. And don't I agree. Um, and thank you for bringing that up because, um, you know, um, that's actually been one of the reasons, another reason besides the traffic mitigation issues that we're trying to refine is we want to make sure that we've got the technical capabilities um, able to run an effective meeting. I mean, I think this is going to be the first time that we will have in an item of such you know um, significance and interest to the community and so that was another reason why we didn't um, push forward with um, trying to get this on for uh, the, the next meeting because we we really want to refine the methods we're using to conduct these meetings so we can make sure it's going to be effective yeah I, I, I have been hoping that actually you know we, we would move it further up to a point where we can actually bring people back into a regular meeting. But 
I understand also that, you know, it's, it's a time sensitive uh, situation for everybody. And then I think everybody wants a, a resolution one way or the other. And don't all 55 speakers get notified? Didn't we collect ad, ad contacts for them? Yes, that's right. It's, it's going to be an extensive mailing list. Um, so it will include everyone within 300 feet of the uh, property, everyone who's spoken or sent us correspondence, and anyone who has otherwise identified an interest of being notified of these items. So yes, it's going to be an extensive mailing list. Thank you. Any more commissioner questions, comments? Okay. I just had one more comment. Um, at our last meeting, it was Earth Day, and I thanked you for your services to the environment, but I was remiss. It was also Administrative, uh, administrative Professionals Day, and so I just wanted to um, give Janeth a big thank you for all the work she does to support this commission. Well, I'd like to give thank Janeth you, Janet. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, absolutely, we need to send you a present. I think. I, I, oh, well, I promise. Uh, yeah, we. I promised her I'd make it up for her since I wasn't able to see her in person. So, uh, uh, I, I, I sent Janet a nice thank you email, which I'm yet still waiting for a response. <laughs> <laughs> She's been busy, uh, Mr. Santa Cruz. <laughs> She's been too busy. Oh, she doesn't need a supporter. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Okay. Thank you. So, All right. Let's close to today's yeah. meeting. Thank you very much. Okay. You Thank nice you. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay. Thank bye. you. Bye-bye. See you bye. next time.